Welcome back. It's seven. <laughs> I just think about Hyde Park. Seven forty-two. You're watching Good Morning Britain. Now, last night, London bid farewell to rock superstar Madonna when she finished her third and final concert at Wembley, drawing to a close the British leg of her multi-million-pound world tour. Her visit to the capital city has been almost as outrageous, they say, as her stage show. Kay Oliver now takes a look back at her UK visit. Madonna's blonde ambition tour will probably be remembered as much for her performance in London's Hyde Park as her antics on stage. The Keep Fit fanatic has been enjoying daily runs, flanked heavily by minders who kept a curious public at bay. Many had camped outside the London Hotel, where she's been staying in a £1,500 a night suite. She's just not some blonde bimbo. She's got brain. She's got a head on her, that's for sure. I see her come out of the side entrance, me and my friend, so we ran after her. We ran for about, I ran for about 12 miles, and then I just couldn't take it anymore, so I just stopped. As the rock multimillionaires went through her paces, a team of 600 technicians were putting the finishing touches to the stage at Wembley, where the woman who enjoys a reputation as the Queen of Sleaze would set London alight, recreating all her video work live on stage. The moment she appeared, Madonna held the fans captive with 18 songs and 8 costume changes. You know, she's unusually talented. She has, she, she knows exactly what she wants at all times. She's not uh, your musician musician but she knows how she knows what every instrument does you know that's what makes her special madonna has a very strict keep fit regime as well as working out in a gym she also runs 12 miles a day accompanied by her own personal trainer it's nice when you deal with someone like her because she is the top of her field and it's nice to see people at that level take an interest in their bodies and their health uh and, and want to train uh, uh in, in, with intensity uh, she knows it's important to her life, and, and it's an active part of her life. Those outfits, quite extraordinary. Paul Gambaccini was there at the concert. Paul, what did you think? What was your verdict? Well, I think she is the supreme female artist in popular music at this time. And indeed, in chart terms of all time, let's remember seven number ones, far more than any other woman, and 22 consecutive top ten hits. And she's still going with that streak, which is surpassed only by Elvis, Cliff, and the Beatles. Mm. Now, the thing is, in live performance, she is a bit more of a sleaze bag than a lot of us are comfortable with, and yes. perhaps than she wants to present herself as. Right. But on the other hand, remember it's calculated. It's not mm. a spontaneous outburst. She but knows what she's doing. All of this is calculated, even <coughs> the swearing. Because, oh, yes. Because there was a, there's stories today, I mean, in, in Express today, it says ban foul mouth Madonna. Well, what a ridiculous story. The problem being that uh, in a live broadcast of the concert, she used her four letter words. But the mm. thing is, that happens every night. Any radio producer who had done a recce, a reconnaissance, would have heard her do it on the show and put her on 10 second delay. That's the way you stop this right. thing. You put her on so 10 she, second delay and bleep it out. She was doing that anyway. It's part of the act. Oh, sure. So. You see, you got to remember, in this era of Rambo and Robocop, I think people want uh, more forceful heroes, and that goes for heroines as well. And so what she does in the show is she comes across as a bossy, tough-as-nails woman. She kicks around her female dancers, she enslaves her male models, and she uses language and attitude on the audience. She's in charge, and don't you forget it! <laughs> but are the audience comfortable with it? I mean, there's a brilliant review t this morning in The Independent. It says most of the audience, sometimes when she goes into these strange acts, they look embarrassed. It says here, like the dog owner whose pet disgraces itself in front of polite company. So people perhaps aren't too comfortable with what she's doing. Well, I think there's a difference in attitude between American and British audiences. Mm -hmm. Americans do like things a bit raunchier, a bit more overt sexually. And uh, there is a scene uh, when she does uh, Like a Virgin, and incidentally, very well musically, she's made it a bit of a ballad, quite effective. But then towards the end, uh, she starts uh, finding unusual delight in her own person. And oh, this dear. is something which causes a lot of people to go, um, <clears throat> wish I wasn't nice. here. And then yeah. she goes right into Like a Prayer. What a relief.
Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the stage setting is great, and we're glad she's on to the next number. I think sometimes she does things uh, which are strictly for American consumption. Like the set, for example, has Oh Father, which was an American, not a British single, but not Dear Jesse, which was a British hit, but not an American single. Uh -huh. This whole thing is preordained at the beginning. It's conceived for the American tastes, and it goes around the rest of the world. And she certainly knows how to keep her name in the headlines as well. Oh, of course. She is the mistress of imagery in our time. Look at all these costume changes. Look at the way that she has gone through images. Only Michael Jackson has really been able to change his image through time and survive. When Debbie Harry changed her hair color, Blondie were finished. When Boy George changed his haircut, that was the end of Culture Club. But Madonna is able to do it. She's one step ahead of the pack. She is smart. Do you think she'll she'll always last? Do you think that she's got that lasting quality that you see in acts like David Bowie? She's so shrewd that I think she will last as long as she wants to. She may get bored of music and want to do more acting, which she's very fond of, or get into some sort of uh, society. We're told she wants to be some sort of art patron or socialite. Mm -hmm. Well, she's certainly got the money for that. But the, the important point is, is that she now does everything. She may not be as great a singer as Whitney Houston, but she's in control of the act. She may not be as great a choreographer or dancer as Paula Abdul, but she writes her own material. You see, Madonna does everything. She may not do it all brilliantly, but together she is streets ahead of any other woman in show business. What about the music itself? I mean, is the music good? Does it sound good? Well, of course, she is a consummate record maker. She makes brilliant productions, like a prayer. You listen to that, and not only is it a fine song with a very serious it lyric. It sounds good live. But, uh, well, yes, partly because, of course, uh, some tapes are used. Uh, and this has become a source of controversy in the United States, where some states are actually trying to legislate against tape music in rock no. concerts. What do you when, think? It's when you pay paying an it? awful lot of money to go and see somebody who's supposedly a supreme talent who then dishes out recorded music to you. What do you think? Well, of? what I think of is it's a change in the era. But uh, and then you see evidence of what happens when that falls foul because her support act was Technotronic, the Pump Up the Jam group. Oh, yeah. And their machinery broke down for a while. And of course, they can't do anything. They can't play. And so they're just reduced to wow. strutting around the stage and saying, Technotronic have techno problems. And of course, it was really Technochronic is what it was. Oh, no. But I mean, embarrassing. Uh, it's terrible. I mean, this great satirist couldn't have done better than describe the scene you've just described to us. Mm. Well, that's We are right. now so far from reality that we're lauding and praising a talent that doesn't even appear live when she's live. Well, no, she does do her own dancing and she does sing. I mean, let's well, give I mean, her credit crikey. for that. I mean, you go but down the road and the little girls can dance and sing. Uh -huh. You don't have to pay millions see of what. quid to see So them. you're making the difference between somebody like Elvis Presley, who, yes. who was an innate born mm. charismatic performer, and mm. someone like Madonna, who has sufficient talent and works very, very hard, and it is incredibly smart and shrewd. And I'll agree there's a difference there. It's a representative of a change of our era, that mm. she is able to manipulate the media through the presentation of image to get where she wants. Mm. That is our time. You are live, aren't you, at this moment? We are speaking this to Paul This has been a recording. Leave a message <laughs> after the tone. <laughs> well done, Canfo. <laughs>